Welcome to the start of Nisei Monogatari, starting our third Monogatari series here on the channel. I'm very excited. I have no idea what we're getting into. I loved Bake, I loved Kizu, so I'm very interested to see what we're going to get. I really don't know where we're going. I've seen the poster on Mal, which has Karen and Sukihi in the center, so I would like to see more of them and get more about them, since they weren't really characters, really, so far. They were just kind of there and talked about and seen a, a little bit but uh other than that i don't know what nisei is about so i'm excited thank you so much to iwayuru one of my viewers and patrons and everything who put in all the effort working on the the subtitles and everything um couldn't do it without you hopefully these videos are enjoyable and and worth all the work so yeah, we're just going to get into this thing. I'm very excited to see what we're in store for. So we're going to watch and discuss episode one. I've got the subtitles and the timer on the screen. If you want to follow along that way or you can pull up the episode on the side, let's get into it. In three, two, one, play. All right, something is breaking. And Araragi is waking. And is... Chained up? Tied up? Okay, good way to start. He's been kidnapped. Doesn't know how long he's been chained up. Might already be the next day. So, what an interesting way to start. He has been kidnapped. Possibly by Senjo Gahara, honestly. <laughs> That's the most likely, and now, yeah. Why, why is that? She hit him over the head? How do you knock him out long enough to do this to him? <laughs> You're the one who's here! <laughs> I don't know how that works with vampire regeneration. Can he be knocked out? I guess so. Oh, good. Antidote? What the fuck? Is this a saw trap? Okay, that makes sense. I don't know why you'd poison him. <laughs> but I'll do it. That's not the thing, but okay. <laughs> this is an intriguing start. Gloat? I guess just the the fact that he knew that butterflies don't sting. Nobody thinks that butterflies sting. Okay. You you kidnapped him to protect him from what? I've never seen Evangelion. It's on the polls. It'll probably win soon. Don't worry. Trying to weasel his way out of there. Give me food, give me a drink. Purple. What is that? Uh, I want it, but damn it. What a tease. How cruel. How horribly cruel to drink it in front of him. I mean, this is true, you, I guess you never did. But is it greedy? Nice. He wants it bad. Obviously. Isn't she always? Dippy bird? She's just going to let him lick a, a drop off of her finger? You kind, merciful goddess. Thank you. 
Specifically a giraffe. I love how we're doing this for so long with no idea why this is happening. That's pretty monogatari for you. Just long-ass conversations about sucking girls' fingers before we even know what's going on. I'm into it. It's been a while, because I just watched Kizu and there was no Senju Gahara, so... It's cool to have her back and her signature dialogue back. Kizu was very heavy on the visuals. Marie Antoinette. Although I don't think she actually said that, but... Whoa! How much time? My summer vacation is ruined. Yeah, from? Are we going to get a flashback? Or maybe the person he needs protecting from is going to find him here. Have you not used the bathroom yet? Oh, a diaper. Fantastic. I love you, so I will change your diapers. That's weird, actually. I wouldn't... That's... I, I Like, if somebody loves someone and they're covered in poop, I really wouldn't blame them for not wanting to embrace them. I'd say that's excusable if you don't want to. Anyway. <laughs> if you're covered in poop from head to toe. Hoy, we are in for something. Great to have her back. Be back into, uh... Into some more of this after the, after the prequel. We'll see where the hell this goes. But, while the opening is playing, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the videos. Nisei Monogatari is coming out on Saturdays with other videos every day of the week. This is a nice opening. Also, check out the description down below for Twitter and Discord if you want to hang out there. And Patreon if you want to support this channel and get these videos early. And vote in polls and get vlogs. Thank you. I'm not reading the lyrics. I'll do it later. I don't like to potentially be spoiled on things. So don't get mad at me because I didn't read the lyrics, please. Okay. We're probably just going to have one opening this time. Or maybe not. Karen B. Maybe we won't. So we're focusing on one sister. The yellow one. Awesome. A lot of work. Thank you, flashback. I, I know. <laughs> Okay, what is she doing? What came up for her? We'll find out later. Hello. I don't know which is the green and which is the yellow, but if Karin B, I have to assume Karin is the yellow one. The bigger little sister. I thought they were twins at first, but they're not, right? They're just pretty close in age. Karin is a little older, apparently. I love the ladders. And the weird art all over. What a what a house.
Okay, well, that sounds like it could be dangerous. You're getting involved with trouble. I guess so. All right, sure. We gotta know how to fight. Whoa! Well, there's no middle one. Yeah. There's a middle sibling. She refuses to get up to get that. <laughs> ah, the remote is too far. I can't do it. I don't know which one Sengoku was friends with. I don't remember, but it doesn't really matter, probably. We might find out. Here she is. No, no, it's perfect. The tree says so. Oh, how convenient. Beautiful. It's still pretty amazing that Hiroshi Kamiya voices Araragi and Izaya in Durarara, and they both have two little sisters, one who wears green and one who wears yellow. That's just, like, oddly specific. Clearly. So it was her that she was friends with. Loaf? Not quite. Not No bread. But she also wants to fuck. So... <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's the problem with, from her point of view. He's friends with Kanbaru. Of course, she's a lesbian. He's friends with Hachikuji, but she's a child and a ghost. Nice. Wait, she's taller than you? Okay, and she uh, is a badass, apparently. I guess that's why she went out to go take care of some trouble. Maturity. Pfft. How old are they? I don't know if I'm having the appropriate reaction to her, depending on how old. She's anime. She does. It doesn't matter. Like, you can say Yoko from Gurren Lagan is 14, but that's meaningless when you draw her like she's 20. So, numbers ain't mean shit in anime. They don't do that. Oh, God. <laughs> what are you planning, good sir? But, it's always time for a little detour. He's really preparing for this.
Okay. Ready? Go! Ah! Uh, okay, I thought he was gonna fucking like, suplex her. No. 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 Whoa, holy shit. <laughs> but that's just their thing. Oh my god. <laughs> That's their rapport. It's fine. Wow. No. What? Nice sign. Uh, kind of. Was Oshino part of Araragi's harem? I don't think... Yeah, like, the harem is already debatable, but then Oshino wasn't part of the harem. <laughs> this is... This is true. You gotta be careful how many people you add and the pace at which you add them. And if one of them is an old man... Clever. Sure. New experiences are good. Well, you have to find out. Money. Okay. I don't know how you'd get money. There's a lot of things. Pizza. That's real cheap. You can. Love is cheap, apparently. Holy shit. I wonder that myself. Apparently there's going to be a dance. Hope it's sexy. Maybe not from you, but... Yeah, all that. Okay. Asura Ragi. Yeah, I could get behind that. <laughs> yes. Obviously. They're bound to find out eventually, though, right? And possibly join the harem as your sisters. Which is fine, because anime. We do allow those things in anime. It's fine. That's right. Yes, uh, Judge Hachikuji. You need the courage to... I don't know. <laughs> you need the courage to cut off your own hand for no reason. You need the courage to go commit murder. Don't do that. Don't do it. All right, I guess we're doing a, a handstand bet. Oh no. Fantastic, what a line, what a line. <laughs> Is he? Does a phoenix go to the flame? Anyway.
that's a uh, yeah i mean that's You're, yeah, but you're just saying negative things, and but saying the courage to do them. <laughs> Although in certain contexts, like these... I mean, that one especially, though. In certain contexts, those other ones could kind of work from some perspective. Yeah, I mean, like... If you're being lazy, knowing that it will, like, lead to you having no job and making no money and having no place to live and dying, but you've accepted that, is... Maybe that's courageous? <laughs> to go through with it? Nice! Can he do it? Look at him! Look at him go! He's still going. He's going to spend the rest of his life on his hands. I can't get down. <laughs> oh, dear. And there they are. Although they were kept pretty hidden. He did it. All right. Yeah, he's still up. Oh, and here she goes, I guess. Oh, no, she's just got down on her hands and knees. What a bizarre thing that has happened. Which isn't surprising in the slightest, because I've watched this show, so... <laughs> I mean, they are. Oh, really? They were see-through? I guess that's why they weren't fully shown to us. Okay. There was a bunny? Pie in the face. And he's still up. He's still on. Okay, he's he's back to normal. Yeah, that was what was happening before all this shit. <laughs> Good analogy. That makes sense. You're learning how the sausage is made. You're learning all the... The backstage production secrets ruining the magic. But a lot of the time, that shit's interesting, learning how they made something like that. A lot of the time, you want to know, and it just gives you more appreciation for the project. But uh, I see where you're going. Farewell. I would hope not. Absolutely. Is she going to get in big trouble in this show? Maybe later, I don't know. Absolutely. He's going to be the one kidnapped soon, though. Cool. So we've gotten a little bit of everybody except for Kanbaru in this premiere. Just mention of her. 
Hanekawa on the phone. Alright, some foreshadowing with Mayoi. I don't know if that'll be in this show or a future one. Well, okay. Uh, by the beginning of the episode, I wouldn't have expected, like, half of it to be devoted to Mayoi and doing a handstand, but that's fine. So, uh, what kind of dance do we get in the ED? Are we gonna dance? But it's cool to get more, uh, screen time on the sisters. We're not dancing. I am. Bobbing my head back and forth. If that's not dancing, damn it, I don't know what is. All right, the first episode of Nisei Monogatari. I'm excited to be watching this because I have no idea what this one is really about or where we're going. Even with this first episode, it's kind of just reintroduction because if you're watching these in the order that the, the anime came out in, then you'd watch this after Bake, especially if you watched them as they were airing and you had to wait. You'd be just excited to see these characters again and be reintroduced into it. And even after watching Kizu, it's nice to have an episode like this just because that was in the past. It was pretty crazy. There was a lot of shit going on. We spent some time away from Senjo Gahara and some of these other characters. So just to have an episode like this to bring us back in, get us back into Senjo Gahara, Monogatari type dialogue and all those interactions with Mayoi and stuff like that was really nice, and uh, it really doesn't show exactly where it's going to go. There's a very interesting plot that's happening that's hinted at with Araragi being in some kind of danger that Senjo Gahara's trying to protect him from, but we know very little about all of that. I was expecting by the end of this episode maybe we'd get more detail, but we didn't. So there's some interesting stuff going on, but in general, no idea where it's going to go. So it's, it's cool to to be back with everybody else, to see Senjo Gahara and all of them again and again hear her wonderful, fun dialogue and her having so much fun with it and with Araragi. Mayoi, Hanekawa on the phone a little bit, Nadako a little bit, no Kanbaru, just mention of her, we don't see her. And we're gonna get a little more focus on Araragi's sisters, which is really cool. I was wondering when, if ever, that would happen, and that's exciting. I can't wait to see more of them. This is apparently the Karen B arc. I assume it's Karen. It's not just straight up Karen, right? Like the Western name, Karen. But either way, this is Karen B, the yellow one. Even though she's not in this episode, uh, we're, we're leading to that. We actually get a little bit more of Sukihi in this one. But yeah, we get to see more of them, which is great. So yeah, just a, a fun introduction. Senjo Gahara has kidnapped Araragi, which is a great way to start the episode with him being chained up somewhere. And then you realize the, the person who most likely did this was, <laughs> was her. And it's for protection from I don't know. And that scene is just so much fun. You've got that, and it's a serious mystery, and it's a big thing. But we just spend all of this time with her teasing him and messing around with him and teasing him with a drink and making him beg and giving him the tiniest little drip off of uh, her finger and it's just fantastic. Monogatari is really good at that where it'll go on tangents that just don't even feel like they're wasting time at all. Sometimes it's it doesn't always work like I think towards the end of Bake with that whole radio call-in show thing that was a little too much for for what it amounted to. But a lot of the time, in the middle of a, something more serious, somebody like Senju Gahara will just go off on this other conversation, and it's just so entertaining that you don't even care. And it's usually character revealing and character building in, in many scenes as well. But yeah, great scenes with Mayoi. A lot of the episode is spent with her talking about some important stuff, like bringing people into your secrets, into this world of oddities, the backstage. How they say, you know, how the sausage is made, learning all of those secrets that you didn't know about before that changes how you view everything. And you're bringing somebody into that, you're sharing your secrets with them that just kind of gets them involved. And you've, you've got to deal with that and, and make sure, and I'm sure the sisters will, learn all of this and, and get involved and be bigger, more important characters. Karin is dealing with some trouble somewhere and Araragi will probably get wrapped up in that and that's probably connected to whatever the hell's going on with the kidnapping. But yeah, for them to become a bigger focus and get more involved will be great. And then all the Mayoi stuff is so much fun. It's, it's so awkward and weird with him, like wanting to grope her and see her panties and everything, but it's just 
so over the top and ridiculous that, you know, I, I don't get like offended. I don't take it super seriously. Like there's been a couple scenes recently in the episodes of Steins Gate Zero that I've watched that have had fan service, but it's just been kind of lame and dumb. But here, when they go so over the top, like in the third Kizu movie, it's just way more fun and it's so disconnected from reality. And that's just him and Mayoi's thing, you know? That's what he does with her. That's their rapport. It's how they are. You buy it. It's great. The animation and art looks beautiful as always. Like her with the claws and climbing up the phone pole and hissing. That was all fantastic. Standing on your head or on your hands <laughs> was, was, was really fun. And saying, having the courage to whatever, fill in the blank. And you can fill it in with whatever kind of negatives you want, which is actually kind of interesting because what she was saying, like having the courage to lie to your loved one, having the courage to betray your friends, having the courage to be lazy. Like you could just say, okay, you're just taking these negative things and putting a positive spin on them. But in a way, like when you think about it, there are contexts where this kind of thing could make sense. Like if you are lying to your loved one for what you could consider to be their sake, knowing that this is like the wrong thing to do, it could be considered courageous to do it. It's actually like a debate that you could have, whether that's just cowardly or whether it's actually an admirable thing. Should you just tell them the truth and bring them in on whatever the secret is, or should you hide it from them because that's gonna benefit them in the long run, or you know, should they be the one to decide that themselves after knowing the truth? Or betraying, betraying your friends a, a little less so. But again, it depends on context. You never know what kind of situations you're gonna find yourself in to where somebody may describe it as courageous. Or like I said during the reaction, if you've decided I'm just gonna be lazy and do nothing, I know this will result in me being homeless, but you know what? I'm gonna do it anyway. That's kind of courageous. Like you've accepted the consequences and have just decided to face them head on. So there's something to be said about that. Hanekawa has just a little bit on the phone where he was supposed to meet for a study session and she's got something else going on. So I assume we'll go back to that. I don't know how much of this is going to come back in Nisei, that stuff with Hanekawa or like Mayoi, which was heavy foreshadowing, talking about not disappearing. Makes me think something's going to go on there. I just don't know if that'll be in Nisei or if that's set up for future shows. I hope it's all within Nisei. I don't know how much focus we get on each girl, but there's some foreshadowing for future events whenever they may happen. But yeah, Araragi Harem, that's just a great conversation. Like, bring all these new people in. You gotta be careful how many people you add and it'll get overwhelming and confusing. And saying that Oshino was part of the harem, <laughs> an old man, gotta find some replacement for him. Just all the meta stuff. Like, oh, it sounds like a, a novel that didn't think it was gonna get adapted into an anime. And then it was surprising that it did. And all this stuff. There was an Evangelion reference that I didn't get because I've never seen that. And just all the meta humor that was in there was really fun. Nadeko, just a little bit, Araragi, you know, wanted to go over there and she's all like, oh no, I'm, I'm busy every other day, but today I'm totally not. It's my one free day, coincidentally. Yeah, 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 come over, definitely. So we'll see how that develops. And like I said, we get to see a little more of Sukihi just kind of lounging around, being, uh, I don't know how old they are. He's like 18. She's the youngest. So she's probably too young for me to say anything about her. But again, She's anime. She doesn't literally have an age. She's drawings. You, you can put a number on her, but it's, it really doesn't mean anything. She's lines on paper, so I don't much care. When you present her sexually, you know, you're saying that she has the, the agency to be seen as that kind of being, and whatever random number you slap onto this drawing basically means nothing. She's got the boobs, she's got hips, she's is good enough, whatever. I'm sure we're gonna get fan service with the sisters, so I'm just gonna accept it now. And that's fine. If you want to bring the sisters into the harem, go for it. I'm all for it. Just do whatever the hell. Go over the top and ridiculous as much as you possibly want. I really couldn't care less. The OP and ED are pretty nice. I don't know if we're gonna be getting different OPs this time. That would be cool. Um, not necessary, but it's, it's it was a nice touch in Bake, so it'd be neat if we get it. I, I'm not necessarily expecting it, but... We'll see. Just so many random little lines, as always, that I could go into detail about threatening him with poison, the whole butterfly bee thing. Being covered in poop, because he's got a diaper. Yeah, if you're covered in poop, I'll still hug you. All, all the shit just about the poop. 
Like, yeah, okay, whatever. That's real, real weird, but good for you. Strong expression of, of your love. But I can't wait to see what Karin is up to and get some more with with the sisters. It was nice to see a little bit of what Tsukihi is like, and we're clearly going to be focusing on him bringing them into this world and this distinction between worry and trust and what it means to share these secrets and the implications of that for someone and dealing with all of that, all those ramifications, what it'll be like for them to find this out, how they'll react, how they'll be part of the story going forward, if it'll be a good or a bad thing for them, and then we got all the other girls too, and whatever other new characters show up. Of course, Oshino left, so I don't know when the next time we'll see him again is. I don't know about Shinobu. We got a lot with Shinobu and Kizu, so I'm fine with not seeing her for a little bit. But also, Kizu very much strengthened our knowledge of the relationship between Amuragi and Shinobu, so I also would like to see her again to see more of that in, in the present. And Hanekawa as well, their relationship was so good in Kizu that I can't wait to see her again soon, but because I got my Hanekawa fill, I am also fine with waiting for a while and having these other girls that we didn't get to see in Kizu have focus for a while. So just having him hang out with Mayoi for a large portion of the episode was, was really cool. As always, there's so many tiny little things when I go back through the episode that I can mention. That's like, I, I can't go over them all. Just like, oh yeah, there's nothing but money and you can buy love for 298 yen. And all that stuff, all the, all the little lines, just all the, the various facial expressions, the cool sets and the direction of it all, like Araragi's house with all the art and the ladders, or where him and Mayoi are hanging out and there's just no one around, because of course there's never any background characters, never anybody who, who matters, which I really like. I still love the style of the visuals. All those tiny little lines, I can't go into all of them. There's a lot of really funny stuff. And now I know that I can just add the courage to to make anything sound better without even making it seem like that's what I'm trying to do. Yes. Life hack, I guess. I'll try it out as soon as possible and I will report back with the results. But for now, thank you for watching. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this first episode. There's not a ton to say because it's mostly just kind of getting us back into things and a lot of fun interactions with little hints of some things going on in the background, but uh, it was entertaining, it was fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing more, so let me know your thoughts down below. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed, and check out the stuff linked down in the description as well. Thank you so much, and I will see you all next time.